Welcome to Boys Episode 182. We did it. We're here. We finally made it. Yeah. This is Episode 182. Uh -huh. As always, I'm Robbie Ray. I'm Joshua. And we are here with what could be defined as a very, very special episode. I think categorically, yes, you could say this is a very special episode. I'm going to give you a little peek behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. Usually, I'm joking around, especially when it's just you and I. Mm -hmm. It's an episode. Mm -hmm. It's a good episode. Dare I say it might be a great episode. Good episode. But is it a very special episode? Not always. No, I want to say for multiple reasons, Robbie. Uh, well, the numerology, for one, mm -hmm. it's 182. We have fantastic guests plural mm -hmm. on also tis the season very special that i always feel like that's something that that uh, coincides with christmas this the season is what i like to say <laughs> this the season that's for colin <laughs> when this comes out it will actually the season mm -hmm. is over but we're keeping that season spirit alive i was about to say the season is calling your pictures are falling down all right, we're going to play a little game uh -huh. for our listeners. Okay. If somebody can count the Blink-182 references in this episode and they get oh, it right, nice, we'll send you a prize pack. What do you think? I like it. All right. I like it. Well, yeah, we do have a very special episode tonight. Mm -hmm. We are going to be joined by three of the boys, two, two or three of the boys from Tweezer. Tweezer is a Weezer tribute band mm -hmm. that we will be playing with this Saturday December 28th at the Speakeasy. You got Tweezer, you got Blink 405, mashing them together. Take your style, you take my style. Interweave them. You interweave them. Well, they, they've played shows together before, Blink 182. They've Weezer. had to. I believe it, right? they toured together back in like 99 or 2000 okay. or something. You know, when, you, when, they were, when they were both hitting that, sh that peak, that stride, I think the Green Album was out, uh, Enema was out. Let's just let's go just full do force. It. Yeah. yeah. So, the, yeah, the show is Saturday, December 28th. The doors are at 9. Mm -hmm. We start promptly at 10. So get there at 9. Get you a drink. Get you a good spot to sit. Mm. Might be kind of cold out. Might be kind of rainy out. I check the weather like a dad. Oh, yeah. Get there a little early. Mm -hmm. Come say hi. We're going to have T-shirts for sale. We will have T-shirts. We will have stickers. We will have buttons. We'll have merch that's going around, guys. It's going to be sweet. So you guys come out, see us. Like I said, the cover is... I think I said. Maybe I didn't say. Either way, the cover is $5, and that is at the 51st Street hey, Speakeasy. Didn't mean to deceive you. Believe me. We're going to get right to the mm -hmm. show, but first, some quick advertisements. Boyspodcast.com. It's a hub of all things boys. There you will find links to our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, as well as that golden donate button. Listen, we got three, maybe a record number of donations this last week. Three. We got three donations in one week. Thank you, guys and gals. Guys and gal, for donating, really means the world to us. Allows us to keep, allows us to keep on keeping on, Josh. It does. Keep on trucking. You light a fire, you you kindle the flame, and you keep on keeping on. Is that a shirt? It could be. Keep calm, drive on. Speaking of, those shirts are coming soon, by the way. They're coming very, very soon. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. My, my chair just squeaked. I'm sorry. That was not a fart. Boys is available on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, YouTube, and Spotify. On Spotify, search just all one word, all lowercase, Boys Podcast. When you do that, every single episode is going to pop up, including this one you're listening to right now, episode 182. I might try to sneak this one out a day early. Squeak it out like see, a fart? Yeah, seeing <laughs> that it's a, uh, it was my chair squeaking. Mm -hmm. Seeing that it's, you know, the week of Christmas, mm -hmm. might try to sneak it out. Give them... Give the, the listeners a little gift. Maybe a little maybe a little a little pre, if you will. I like it. I don't know. Email us, boys at boyspodcast.com. Send us some feedback. Throw your physical address in the bottom of the email. Mm -hmm. And we'll send you out a sticker pack. We got we got a real bounty here. We got a lot of good stickies to share with you. Thanks to our sponsors, Anthem, Anthembrewing.com. Tap room is located at 908 Southwest 4th Street, just on the other side of downtown Oklahoma City. Go in there, get you a fresh brew from the tap. Tell them boys sent you. They'd love to see you. Fat Bison, fatbison.com. Creator, proprietor, maker of wooden signs and products. 
beautiful science. This guy is making, he's making some great science. I don't know why every time I do uh, every time. I go to Trump. Every time. He makes beautiful, great science. I've, I've seen him. I, and I, I would know. I know great science. I kind of like wooden products. Does wooden. that sound generic <laughs> as hell or what? He makes great, high quality, durable, dependable wooden products. It makes me think of like, um, you know, like old Christmas movies like the uh, Rankin and Bass where it's like the elves are making toys, but they're all made of wood. Like, did you ever have wooden toys as a child? I don't remember having wooden, like a train or a... The only wooden toys I remember, two wooden toys mm -hmm. that I remember, one of which at my grandma's house, she had a tube, I guess you'd say. Mm -hmm. It was about the size, do you remember back in the day when they sold the, uh, the corn, or no, corn, cheese balls in like the tube? Yeah, yeah. Like I, the pretty good size tube? I think I know what you're about to talk about. Lincoln Logs. Exactly. She had an old school set of Lincoln Logs, and I played with those quite a bit when I was young. I think they might have been my dad's. Oh. Passed down to a whole generation. Well, I think they still make them. I'm, I'm sure they repackage them in like a nostalgic looking box or whatever. Yeah. Or those, uh, I thought you were going to say those ones that are like wooden twigs that have the little round things that the twigs go into. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? I remember those. That was like the early form of the connects. Yeah, yeah. You make, it, it doesn't, you, nothing looks cool. You nah. just, Tinker coach. toys. Tinker toys. Fat Bison does not make tinker toys. Second wooden toy. Dildo. Wooden dildo. <laughs> Abe Link Wait, George Washington's wooden dildo. No, uh, the balsa wood airplanes. Oh, yeah. With the rubber band. Yeah, those are fun. And you'd like twist up the propeller. Did you ever get it to fly? Let it go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Pretty far? Uh, pretty far. I had the ones pretty where far. they come in that little pla packaging and you open it up and you just slide the uh, wing into the body. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't really yeah, go they're not that great. Far. Not that great at all. Oh, uh. uh slingshot did you ever make your own slingshot my grandfather made me a slingshot mm -hmm. however the slingshot that i really uh cut my teeth on was a metal folding slingshot oh the remember? one that goes with the wrist rocket. it had the yeah. wrist had the wrist guard and the like uh i guess it was like some sort of tubing some sort of elastic yeah, yeah. tubing or mm -hmm. rubber tubing yeah like like a like a junkie wrapped his arm with exactly yeah. dude i loved man what was more magical as a boy than shooting heroin? I don't know. <laughs> right. No, a slingshot. No, dude, they're they're great. There's a reason they're timeless. That Dennis the Menace have one hanging out of your back pocket. Mm -hmm. I had one. I think my dad may have made it for me. But it was your classic goalpost looking slingshot with a he he used like this rubber tubing, mm -hmm. not like a heroin tubing, but like it looked like a if you were to chop a tire up like a thin strip of rubber. Okay. With that, and then it had a leather. Ooh, that's old school. Yeah, to hold something in. The one my grandpa made me was a piece of wood. In mm -hmm. fact, I think I still have it somewhere at the house. A piece of wood carved mm -hmm. in kind of a goalpost shape. Mm -hmm. uh, two like heavy duty pieces of rubber, almost like a fucking thick, fat rubber band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it had the leather, mm -hmm. like almost like it was from the top of a tongue of a shoe or yeah, something. Yeah, because you, you got to have that, that leather to hold the ball or mm -hmm. whatever you're going to shoot across the yard. Now, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't have a ton of money growing up. I should say my parents didn't have a ton of money growing up. I was never fortunate enough to have the slingshot ammunition. No, it's always rocks. Dude, mine was go to the garage, look in dad's Folgers 10 and start just nails. Sure. Nuts. I would try to like hold a nail and try to get it to where it would stick into wood. Mm. It never worked. Never did. Super dangerous because that shit can like ricochet and shoot your eye out. Did you ever shoot um, like nuts? Yeah, nuts and bolts. Mm -hmm. uh, um what do you call those? Uh, marbles, 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 marbles. Marble I marbles. love marble marbles. <laughs> what about um, M80s or black cats? Oh, n what? Like yeah. light them and sling them? Yeah, we. I would. I would draw it back. Yeah. And then my buddy Sean would light it, and then I would. It would be like an inch from my face. Yeah. And then I'd you let it go. Sizzle, yeah. You'd hear that sizzle. You'd let it fly, and then boom. And you you want to time it to where it goes off in midair. Right. Yeah. yeah. If it hits the ground and goes off, boring. Might you could have just thrown it. Drop it on the ground. Just yeah. That was a big one. Um, Slingshots are dope. We did BBs. Mm -hmm, a lot of BBs. Which that was pretty pretty painful. Set up Coke cans. and Oh, yeah. I mean, you hit each other with them. You're not supposed to. You're supposed to set up targets. Mm -hmm. But come on, man. Wear safety glasses. Who does that? Nobody. Nobody. But yeah, I was Nerds. I was mainly a rock shooter. Yeah. I mainly slingshot. shot rocks with my slingshot. Hey, maybe Fat Bison will make you a slingshot with your logo on it or your name on it. I did see today, I checked... Uh, at Fat Bison on Instagram, mm -hmm. and he made a, it looked like a paddle. It was to like beat a, your kid with? I don't know. Now, there's many uses for paddles. Beating your kid with it. That or boats. 
Oh, okay, like a okay, like that. Spankings, like for your lover. Sure, sure, sure. Or sure. maybe a stranger. Yeah, a stranger in the night. I had a girlfriend who had a paddle. She was in a sorority, and I guess they gave her like a, a paddle when you get inducted. I don't know what they did. Call she it. squirt uh, ketchup and mustard all over the kids in the back of the truck. I think so. Okay, and but it had the Classic. Tri-Delt logo, and of course it's Tri-Delt. But yeah, it's a paddle. That you could use sometimes for sexual things if you want to. So maybe he could, I don't know, hit him up. Tell him boy sent you. Make, he'll make you a sex paddle. Sex paddle. I like it. Champion Vintage, champion underscore vintage underscore OKC on Instagram. Check them out. And lastly, thank you guys for your donations. We thanked you before. We'll thank you again. We're not above it. Your donations, your feedback, your love that you send to us on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. That reminds me, when I was probably 13 or 14 mm-hmm. you know about the about the age you start getting pretty interested in in the opposite sex in girls i mean you know like when you were like young young you had your little girlfriend at school sure, or whatever yeah. but you know when you really start feeling the tingle mm-hmm. you know what i mean when you start feeling this yeah. yeah um i remember there was a girl that lived down the street from me and her name was holly moorhead which to all of us 13 year old boys in the neighborhood that was like hilarious you know? yeah but did you, okay but <laughs> Did you know what no. head meant? I mean, I knew that it meant something sexual, but I didn't know what it meant. There was always that trashy kid on the bus who knew all the sexual stuff. Mm-hmm. Pro- probably didn't really have sex, but knew a lot about it. Mm-hmm. And then he would explain to you, like, or he would, you know, he's laughing at it. So y- you got to laugh too, even though you have no idea. Yeah. And like, it makes you like super uncomfortable mm-hmm. and it almost like it had this like darkness to it. Oh, sure. Like what, what happened to that kid? Yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. Dude, like mm-hmm. that kid had a... Fucked up childhood. If you're if he's 10 12, years old yeah. and you know what head means, come on, man. Well, anyways, Holly, <laughs> mm-hmm. she was she was like the neighborhood cutie. Let's just okay. say, okay? The girl next door. But but not, if my memory serves me correctly, neighborhood cutie, not the cutest, but the neighborhood girl, so she is by default like the cutie. Right. She's you know. the cutest girl in the neighborhood. You ever been a neighborhood cutie? I, I don't think I was a neighborhood cutie. I don't, you know, my neighborhood was... We're all solid like sevens, you right. know. We're not. We weren't like. Same. We weren't the cool kids. We were just solid sevens. Yep, solid know? sevens. So uh, I I remember one time my buddy Desmond, he had a little crush Tutu? on her. Was that Desmond Tutu? Yeah, Desmond. I don't know who that is. I've heard the name. I don't know okay. either. Well, I remember one time he was like, "Hey man, would you would you make out with Holly?" And I had this little retort that I had ready. Because mm-hmm. she came up often when she wasn't around. Sure. And I remember saying, I'm not above it, but I'd like to be below it. You, Knowing not what that meant. But you heard it somewhere. I just, yeah, I heard some some variant of that, and I thought I was so cool for saying that. That's a good line. I ain't above it, but I'd like to be below it. I didn't know what I would do. Mm-hmm. I didn't know the mechanics back then. I no, still don't, but no. definitely back then I did not know the mechanics. The mechanics of sex is was so foreign and weird to me as a kid. Like you try, like you know, you'd stay up late at night. And you'd watch like Hollywood hot tubs or Red Shoe Diaries, mm-hmm. and those little those sex those little sex scenes that they would have. As a grown man, I look at them and I laugh. It's like, okay, there's that's not. How yeah, you do that. Right. But think about being a kid. Like, that's what I thought sex was. It was like, okay, well, she's going to, you're just going to slap your, your fronts together. Yeah. Bumping fronts. Bumping fronts. Yeah. But that's not how it goes at all. No, that would hurt. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know. I, I, now I'm thinking about Holly. I wish, I, maybe I should look her up. Look her up on the old Facebook. Yeah. Well, also, when I was a kid, I was probably eight or nine. And there, I lived on a, dirt road out in the country so i didn't i was never a neighborhood cutie because Mm -hmm. i wasn't in a neighborhood yeah maybe i was the only neighborhood cutie i don't know your neighbor was your closest neighbor was like you know what a hundred yards from my driveway yeah that's all that's a hike but i did have a a family that lived across the street Mm -hmm. and they had a daughter named nicole Mm -hmm. and i was probably eight or nine maybe 10 and she was 13 and I had one of those bunk beds that were like the L-shaped bunk beds where it was like top bed and then bottom bed that kind of went in a corner. And okay. then then I had a dresser that slid underneath the other side of the top bunk. Okay. Which made for a great little fort hiding spot oh, yeah, yeah, behind yeah. it. Mm-hmm. And I remember she came over and we'd, we'd spend a lot of time back there. And 
one thing led to the other and we were touching each other, mm-hmm. touching each other's privates. And Pri- I had privately, privately, I had no idea what I was doing. Mm-hmm. I don't think she really did either, but that's where I learned parts, Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? And I remember like putting my hand down there and just being like, whoa, this is weird, you know? Yeah, yeah. And uh, my mom walked in on us and my dad was at work when this was all happening. Uh-huh. And I remember she, we had dinner that night. So she made Nicole go home and she held this over my head. Like, do you want me to tell your dad? Uh... Do you want me to tell your dad? And I remember that night she made spaghetti. In fact, it was mom's spaghetti. Mom's spaghetti. Yeah. And I'm sitting there at the dinner table with my dad, my mom, and my sister. Just probably just so warm, like don't say anything. Sweating, mm-hmm. re- like red faced, mm-hmm. sweating. I know it's gonna come out. I just don't know when. When's she gonna say it? And I remember eating the spaghetti, and my mom eventually saying, "So, Robbie, do you want to tell your dad what happened today?" And I just remember like taking a swallow of spaghetti. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it just felt like you know I was swallowing a, a two by four, and then like time just like stands still, and you're like, "What do I say?" I know exactly, I do? and I, I do. I I can still you know like thirty years later, twenty eight years later, I can still remember the feeling. Like I'm getting the feeling again, mm-hmm. thinking about it, and I tried to play it off, and I was like, "I don't know what you're talking about," or you know, "I don't know." Right, and then she kind of looked at me, and then she was like, "Nicole came over, and they they played." And I was just like, Phew. oh, my God. Ooh. She never told him. Oh. Never told him. But but she held it over my head. Oh, like, yeah. Hey, go clean your room, you little finger. Or whatever. No, she yeah, didn't say yeah, that. Little, but you know what I mean? Like, little pervert. Yeah, you little, little rubber. Well, I mean, kids kids do that. Like it, That happened to me when I was younger, too. Play and doctor. I, I never told anybody about it. And then, you know, I'd hear friends talk about their stories. I'm like, so everyone kind of had that experience of, like, a, a neighbor kid who you mess around with now my thing was this girl was our next door so when we lived on tinker air force base it was they were separate houses but they were joined by the garage you know kind of like townhouse kind of a vibe and they lived in the one attached to us this young girl showed me things you know what i mean like she was she was i don't want to say aggressor but she did stuff right and then i find out years later talking to my brother that she did stuff with him too so something happened to that girl I think. yeah something it wasn't a we're in a good household, I don't assume. Well, see, and that, that kind of ties into mine because the girl that lived across from me as a kid, she had a really mean dad. Mm-hmm. Not like Jenny from Forrest Gump's dad or anything like that, but like right. he was just kind of an asshole. Sure. Shitty to her. Yeah. So, yeah, be nice to your kids. Be nice to those kids. Stay together for the kids. Be nice to those kids. I look back, you know, and I was like, dang, what was she doing with that nine-year-old boy? Damn, that's weird, you know? Very yeah. uncomfortable. I'm, I'm feeling very uncomfortable. But it, it's a four year. But it's a four year difference. But that four year, eh. it's a formulative four years though. Oh, for sure. I totally. You're way different at nine than you are at thirteen. Yeah. And then you're way different at seventeen than you are at thirteen. Big time. And twenty one. Seventeen to twenty one. All different. those years. All of those years are very crazy. But then once you hit like twenty, like twenty one, twenty one and twenty five, you're pretty much the same person. I mean, yeah, if you're if you're if you have a girlfriend, if you're 25 and your girlfriend's 21, like it's that's. Fine. Are we still talking about sex? Yeah. yeah oh, OK. Yeah, yeah. Sexually. Yeah, Se- maybe about the same. Sexually. Depends on when you get started. I was kind of a late bloomer. 18 for me. OK. Se- sex wise. Everything. But I had this conversation with a friend recently about that, like growing up Christian and uh, how uh, sex before marriage was. No, 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 no. Yeah. Big no, no. Nothing. You don't do anything. So when you put that kind of suppression on a child they want to do stuff but you're also so scared to have actual sex but you do everything but like it's okay to if you suck my dick or i go down on you or we jack each other off or whatever like that's fine we'll just go sunday morning and we'll repent that is just so skirting around the rules though isn't it well yeah i mean you dry hump and all like i'm still nutting you know what i mean like we're we're still doing things that god destroyed cities for right you know what i mean yeah like like a couple of well, sodomites. Well, like the whole, there's some people, there's a city in this state that the girl, Christian girls there would do anal because God didn't say anything about that except smiting two cities for doing so. Right. Uh, uh, nothing but that. Nothing. Yeah. But 
No, it's still, I'm still over. No, you're not, man. Yeah, no, no, you're not. Got a wee wee in your poo poo hole. That, that's, ooh, yeah, that's a, that's a big step. It's a big leap. It's a big leap. Speaking of big leaps, <laughs> I was like, come on, segue. You got it. You got it. A couple more things here to take care of, and uh-huh. then we're going to get to our interview. Get to the show. We have a couple of dad, dad hats left. Dats. Some dats left. Uh, 20 bucks plus shipping if you're outside of Oklahoma City. Hit us up on Instagram, mm-hmm. at Boys Podcast, if you want one, and we'll get one to you one way or the other. We also have a hotline. Boys we, hotline. We do. It's 405 582 Oh, two, four, two. That's not, I almost went to that Tall Paul insurance. I love that song. Uh, hit us up. Call us. It'll be, you, you just leave a message. We're not going to answer it or anything. You're right. going to hear Rob's beautiful voice, and then it's going to be a beep. You leave a message. You can leave a comment, criticism, love, a jingle idea, a show ideas. If you just want to say hi, say hi. Feedback. We'd love to hear your voice. The feedback super important. We love to hear from our listeners mm-hmm. and guest ideas. Yeah, you just go ahead and do that. Give us a call. Give us, give us a ring, and we might even play it on the air. Hell, maybe. I, now, I feel yucky now that we talked about my childhood experience. You wanna, do you want to clear the air with maybe something a little more goofy, something a little more fun? <laughs> no, not really. i tell you what. Mm-hmm. Let's just get to the show. Let's just get right to it. Episode 182 with the guys from Tweezer. On with the show. <laughs> Okay, we're here with Blake Fisher, Danny Black, and Matt Buckley, and Chris Monier from the band Tweezer. Yes. How you guys doing? <laughs> we're good, I think. Doing great. <laughs> <laughs> Chris by digital proxy, thank you. <laughs> oh no, he's he's here. He's in the Aren't room. You Chris? Yes. <laughs> Very good to see you. Chris, I haven't seen you in a while, man. You doing all right? Put your drink down. No. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm really sorry sad, to hear sad that. Sad to hear. So the reason we had you guys on, one of the reasons we had you guys mm-hmm. on tonight is we have a show coming up. This episode will drop one day before the show. It's good timing. And yeah, I thought it was. And you know, oddly enough, this is episode 182. So it kind of works out perfectly in that regard. And uh, It's all about the numerology, Rob. You know, I've, I've known, personally known Danny for a long time. We go pretty far back. It's been a while. And <laughs> I I know I've met you two in the past. Yes, we've crossed paths. But sure. uh, glad to have you here. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks for having us. So I want to jump right into it and ask you guys, um, how long have you been doing Tweezer? A long time. It's I been was, over a decade. Yeah, because we had a 10-year anniversary show. I think it was 2003, so I'm pretty sure it's like six. No. Yeah, it had to have been 2003, so it's like 16 years almost uh, or something. <laughs> That long. Which is bananas, <laughs> but yeah, it's been a really long time. That's well, crazy. I remember seeing you guys many, many years ago at the uh, Belle Isle Brewery. That used to be our staple place. That's, yeah, that's what I thought. And then they, I guess, changed who booked stuff there and didn't want us back. <laughs> so I'll tell you what, before we go any further, yeah, everybody say their name so we know who's talking here oh, yeah. that's listening. I'm Blake. Matt Buckley. Danny Black. And Chris Monier. Chris can't say his name. Yeah, yeah he's hey, Is your name Chris Monier? <laughs> Shit. So I'd, I'd like you to verify that. Yes. Very it good. Is. Thank you, Chris. That's so, yeah, awesome. 15, 16 years, about something like that? Yeah, I mean, we play sometimes upwards of one or two shows a year. So it's 16 years, but a total of probably like 30 shows. Well, if I, that makes sense. Yeah. In my memory of Tweezer, how, yeah, it was probably Bell Isle Brewery shows, but it's always a happenstance to be around Christmas time, and that's probably because that's when everyone's in town. It's true. And Weezer songs. I mean, you guys probably, okay, you guys, cat out of the bag, you guys were minutes too far. Yeah, most of us were minutes too minutes far. Too Matt was not, but not Matt was a buddy uh, going back, and we had uh, a couple of different... Iterations Loper, of, I think Andy Loper uh, yeah. played it. Yeah, one. so oh, yeah. yeah, at one point it was, yeah, like different sets of people. It was basically always me, Danny, and Chris, and then kind of an rotating bass. Yeah, rotating you had uh, bass. Myrick was in there for a minute. Yes, and I think I played bass at the first Tweezer show because it was you and JT that played guitar. So at did, did Tweezer Matt, Matt Owsley played? Matt I was Owsley terrible played? at bass. I mean, yeah. Matt, yes, Owsley, I think Matt Owsley played a show. One show. 
You I think it was you played a show, couple, maybe a few. Well, I was trying to find a, a YouTube video of you of Tweezer, and the one video that I could find was Matt Owsley playing bass. Uh, Probably he looked way Florence. taller than he is in real life. But yeah, camera it, adds a few inches, I guess. Tyler, or was it Tyler? Did he play bass? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but there's just a picture of him posing. I I think that you were like, like I think it was like kids at the bar era or something like you were not in town and no, we what, did, what, what, what was it? it the gazette wrote a thing on tweezer and very last minute they needed a photo of us which we had never done <laughs> and so we took a picture but you were out of town you needed to stand and it was in. like it was a that day kind of thing so we just had tyler come to it <laughs> and so he's always been in all of our promo pictures but has never played in our band that's hilarious and this is just our buddy tyler thomas and like you don't know him <laughs> <laughs> It's funny to us, but so did know. so did Tweezer come out of? Did it come out of the minutes too far thing? Like, do you guys did you guys like at band practices like jam on a Weezer song or two, or just maybe a mutual love of? What, what are the origins of Tweezer, guys? Give me give me the stud. Hey, <laughs> well, we you always get your stud. We all liked Weezer, obviously. Who did? And at the time, we really liked that Maladroit album. I think that's that an album. underrated Weezer. Album. I think so too. It definitely honest. is. There's some riffs on that. And I, I was not in Minutes Too Far at the time. I was in Minutes Too Far, then I was out for a little bit because I moved away, and I came back. So it started in between those parts, and it was just a fun thing to do. We would have we'd have friends that come in from out of town, and we couldn't do we didn't want to do Minutes Too Far shows more than every three months or so. Mm-hmm. So it Smart. became a way to like support them, get some people out to see our friends' bands play, and us still draw a crowd, but not with Minutes Too Far. And it's really fun because we kind of acted like jackasses on stage and super cocky and stuff, which is not really our yeah. our real thing in real bands. But um, and people bought it a lot of times. <laughs> Thought we were... It, Just assholes. For a long time, <laughs> for about 10 years of the band, every show we played, someone came up to us and was blown away by how good the songs were. And like, these should be on the radio. And we were like... <laughs> they are. They are. <laughs> we are a cover band. <laughs> literally. <laughs> They literally would like the whole show not understand that we were playing someone else's songs. Right. They just thought Dude, we were writing hey, hits that, and that no one, one had discovered that one us. song you guys did about the about the sweater, the pulling yeah. that's that's a hit, man. You guys oh, got know. a hit on your hands. I mean it happened every I guess some guy would just happen to be at the bar and not understand that we were um a Weezer cover band. And you just want to be like, That's why we picked these songs. It's true. We're not, you know, like uh, Blink did their mm-hmm. Blink four oh five, excuse me, did our first show a few months ago mm-hmm. and we did uh, Enema of the State front to back solid and then we did about six or seven other songs right. as kind of an encore of sorts jams encore jams and i i totally feel what you're saying though because we've we've grown up being in bands and playing you know small to medium venues and shows and things and there is this like sense of confidence that i have playing mark hoppus that i never had in my own band because a i didn't write the songs mm-hmm. b like we practiced really hard and we were confident we were like you know, because writing the songs is the hard part to me, anyways. I'll speak for myself, but these songs that we grew up with, that I've listened to hundreds and hundreds of times, it was almost second. Once you learn the kind of the chord progression, the structure, or whatever, it was almost like second nature, and it's yeah. just like super easy. So it it allows me to have a little more fun, if that makes any sense. Well, and also like the crowd, you can feed off the crowd more because let's face it, when you're when you're in a, a band band, it, your first. God, maybe all of your shows, they have no idea what the lyrics to your songs are. Right. You know what I mean? So they're not going to sing along with you. But if you're playing like Weezer songs or Blink-182 songs, they're like way into it. And you can kind of feed off that. And that's kind of where that, the bravado, the arrogance, you basically, you're playing a character on exactly. stage. Exactly, yeah. Especially and, with, with the Blink thing, it's like, we can tell like dick and fart jokes all night. Right. Which a lot of those have not aged well. No? In no. our modern culture. It's Okay. There, there's even some lyrics that we've kind of discussed, like, yeah. should we do this? Should we, should we alter it in a way? Like what? Just out, like out of curiosity. Um, so in I'm one sure of the that songs, there's plenty. Yeah, in one of the songs that we're playing, he says, I'm so retarded. Yeah. The now, R personally, Ooh, the hard, hard R, R, hard right, D. Right. Uh-huh. Now, personally, I don't care. You know, Hard D? I am not retarded, so I don't care about that. But we did talk about, jokingly, like, should we change it? Should we change it to like... I'm so disheartened. A word that doesn't exist. Right. That might I don't fit. know. I don't know. But we're gonna do it. We have to. We're playing. Yeah. A character. I don't know. That's a. I don't know. I don't. I've never had to. I've never been faced with that. I guess with Weezer. 
Yeah, they don't really Although, have any. Although, no, they do. Well, they've you have got... to say, like, half Japanese girls, your eyes are slit. There's a lot, there's a lot of racial undertones. But they pretty much have a radio edit for almost everything. Right. My true, but they're kind of No one knows it, but what's the is American Gigolo that has fag in it? But you don't know until you have to look up the lyrics because I oh, can't yeah. understand what Rivers Cuomo was saying. Yeah, fa- uh, of, the year, of the yeah, year. Yeah, which is, yeah. I don't understand what he's talking about. So I'd say that's probably a little less. Maybe uh, they just got off like a British tour and they were all smoking cigarettes. They could have been. I don't know. I mean, the cigarette of the year. Yeah. No one knows what he's singing about most of the time anyway, I guess. so. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's one of those things, though, like. I feel like you can get away with to some extent whenever you're playing, you know, some Weezer. music. Oh, oh I, right, exactly, Chris. Chris yes. You little scamp. <laughs> just button into that. He just mic. wanted to make sure we we knew what band you guys yes. are paying tribute to. I think yeah. if you're doing someone else's stuff, it's a little weird to change it. Right. Yeah. It Unless almost... you're changing it for artistic reasons. If you're going like, oh, this would be a fun way to do this song. I don't know, but if you're censoring yourself, hard. you're almost giving power to that which you are censoring. If that makes sense, I also think that's deep, man. Thank you. Whoa. I also think most people aren't really. I don't know. My theory is that most people that are actually in the group that's supposed to be offended aren't the ones that get offended. It's all the people that are around them, like right. trying to defend them from being offended. So I don't know. I agree. I think also. I think that speaking of playing characters, I think a lot of people play up that they're more offended about things than they really are. Well, what they call that virtue signaling, my friend. Yes, that's a, there's a lot of that going on these days. And people probably won't do it at the show. They'll just do it on Twitter no. afterwards. Exactly. So, of course right, they're not going to do it to your face. No, they never will. People no. are hard peas. Can we say that? <laughs> I don't you know. can say whatever you want. Okay, they're pussies. <laughs> right. <laughs> now <laughs> we're all like so worried about what we're going to say. I know. <laughs> We might as well nah, wrap if we, it up. If, if, we, if we were worried about that, we wouldn't be here 182 episodes. Yeah. I'm not actually. I fully intended on saying pussy. Yeah, go you can it. go back to some early episodes. There's some zingers. Yes, there are. It was different times back different, then. Hey, I mean, it was a different like time. It was three years ago. Yeah. In a pre-Trump world, you know, you can say what you want. <laughs> so what what goes in, what is going into this show, guys? Like, how do you guys pick songs? Let me preface that real quick. So for our, like I said, for our first show, we did <clears throat> Enema, 20 year anniversary of that. This time we changed it up. We're just doing like a huge 20, 21 song greatest hits package, which is funny because even at 21 songs, the set list is like 50 minutes long. Right. It's not. Su- <laughs> and we, we have a tendency to play <laughs> a, a little faster. Yeah. You know, as you do. Because we're mm-hmm. punk. Yeah. And, well, uh, and then, you know, ener- energy, just feel yeah. that raw energy of the yeah. crowd. You know, you got to bring I'm it. sure Chris refuses to play to a click, too. Not, no, not no. that anyone's pushing you that. You guys on play him. to a click? Sometimes, Depends. usually, yeah. it's yeah. only to find the. It's mostly just to find the right tempo to start the thing, because it is the surprising thing. When we started playing Weezer songs, we tended to play them fast, mm-hmm. start them way too fast. As we've gotten older, we've often found that we start them too slow. <laughs> right, it's a weird thing. It's a natural progression, I guess. So and so, yeah, Chris, our Chris. Uh, does oh, a lot. We have two, yeah, two, two Christians. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, he tends to maybe start a song on a click, but I don't know if he does it the whole way through. It depends on how much we stay with him. So are you guys heavier on like the first two albums, or I, I want to leave the set list as a surprise? But you kind would you say of, you're heavier on the older stuff? I'd say I'd say you kind of have to be. Same with us. You know, um, there there are certainly are gems throughout you know uh their their discography but i mean you just you you have to play a lot of blue you got to play yeah. a lot of pinkerton mm-hmm. you know uh um, little green yeah maybe def- little green. It, it, everything exactly everything else is like just kind of a little bit of this a uh, little bit of that i feel like it's turned into like other than those like the core staple albums like which ones are the most fun to play yeah. you know yeah. like right. american gigolo and you know ones like that so that's kind of what we gravitate we towards. know a lot what of the singles do. Not all of them, but if it was a single, I mean, we want people to have a good time. We're not yeah. just there to play. So it's like, we want them to have heard the song and you can get a pretty good general sense of like, what's the cut on the red album that everyone liked, right. but wasn't single. You the know, answer is like, nothing. No, no, no. <laughs> like, uh, what was the, nothing. the Troublemaker? Uh, wasn't that yeah. the one on? I think that was. The I can was, with, well, greatest man that ever lived. I think that, that was fun. red we, and that yeah. one's cool, but man, is that, that would wait, be. Wait, was Troublemaker the, yeah, it's the one that says Troublemaker. The radio is really trying to push that one troublemaker with a hard r guys. right hard r, hard r. <laughs> troublemaker but yeah i mean the only two hey. we know 
front to back are the blue and, and sure Pinkerton. yeah those are well, the ones we played all the way through and a lot of it gets peppered into sets yeah. those are my favorites when we play blue album beginning to end those are really yes. my favorites yeah, Pinkerton is totally. harder to play oh front to sure. back well, surprisingly it's just it, the the song structure on every single well not every single but most of those songs is just not conventional uh, probably a lot of layering as well and well, key changes like yeah. in the middle of key nowhere key changes is circle back yeah. around to uh to Half verses that should have yeah. the same progression and they don't right um it's just a lot of stuff that you know <laughs> see we're lucky doesn't in, make sense but it's there yeah we're lucky in the fact that blink is pretty straightforward yes a b a b cor- yeah the, yeah, the yeah, hard yeah. part though is hitting those high notes so i, I play mark yeah I play bass and sing he struggles with some of those high notes too he does yeah. man he does and, and that's that's kind of the beauty of choosing blink 182 is they're kind of known for being shitty yeah, live yeah. Yeah. so yeah. i felt like at our first we're setting, show we sent that bar real low yeah i feel like at our first show we played as good as they do yeah. normally yeah, yeah. yeah i'm There's, known for firing people for being out of tune so it just totally makes sense for, yeah for weezer right yeah uh, yeah I, that's what i've allegedly wait know. what happened no, nothing okay <laughs> don't worry about it well so with us it's like you know there are some i'm kind of the same way like all i would say most of our set is dude ranch and enema yeah there's a there's couple some, from, there's some take off your pants there's, but there, where there's other hits peppered in but yeah i mean enema i would say i mean different from weezer enema is their blue album i think that's where most people know them that's where their biggest hits yeah. came from were those say it ain't so all t- wait, uh, well, wait. Say it ain't so. All the small things and the song "Say It Ain't So." Mm-hmm. Lyric is in both of those songs, right? But those, I think, those are like counterparts. You know what I mean? Like big hit, big hit, and then Dude Ranch. People, some people like Dude Ranch. I don't know. I mean, that was the first CD of theirs that I ever owned. But was it in reverse? But really. You, so you went backwards, you got Enema, and they were like, I'm going to dig deep. I went backwards. Oh, I back. liked them, Dude, but I didn't the same, have the CD. Same. I mean, because they were on, this is the this is where I learned about Blink-22 from the Can't Hardly Wait soundtrack, because oh, Sam yeah. was on there. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that was a, that, that was a, was a great was a movie. Great, sound, great movie, great soundtrack. Great movie. I love that movie. Anyway, so but I didn't have the album yet. So yeah, I went backwards. Well, the, the, So Blink put out a new album, what, a few months ago? Mm-hmm. Four months ago, three September months ago. September called Nine. September. Yes, and I we talked about it on the show quite a bit. Mm-hmm. I really liked that album. Like, I really, really liked it. Like much better than California. Mm-hmm. I agree. Um, but nobody wants to hear anything off. Right. Of like you know, I know Dark Side was kind of yeah, it, but kinda. it's not gonna like get anyone. Yeah, it's They're not gonna draw people no. to yeah. the show. No, no, you want they want the sing along ability. They want to feel like they're nineteen again. They want to, you know. Well, I don't know if it's yeah. the same for you guys, but for us, that's what it makes us feel when we're up there playing them. It's like I don't know. I feel younger when I'm singing about jacking off and <laughs> well, when you yeah. when you fucking when you, dogs. <laughs> when you slap on a pair it of a baggy too. dicky shorts, you know it's gonna happen. Yeah, I should try that. There yeah. is a masturbation thing that goes on quite a bit between Weezer and uh, Blink One Eight Two. Now that you mentioned that, we should do something like that at the show. Oh my shows. god, we should just yeah. jerk off songs. on stage. Let's not. <laughs> that, that probably gets in a little bit a little bit of trouble. Oh. As long as you don't say retarded, it's okay. You can do anything else. Anything else. Indecent exposure, totally okay. (laughs) Totally fine. We should change our name to Squeezer for this one. Uh, Yes. Squeezer. (laughs) So, yeah, you guys done different names, right? No. No. It's always Tweezer. It's always been Tweezer? Okay. I don't know if you guys changed it up for a kind Always Tweezer. And we now we have had some mix ups with once social media came into the foray. We Mm -hmm. have been accident. We were Tweezer owned you on Twitter and some other. I guess there are other Weezer cover bands. No. Inferior, no doubt. Oh, for sure. But they'll, you know, <laughs> someone will tag us for like the show in somewhere. And I've always jokingly started like acting like I'm really upset about using that someone name. would confuse us with an inferior Weezer cover band. And people never get that that sarcasm and I'm being facetious. They well, just are like, dude, why? I mean, I don't know. Well, there's so many. Like when we, when we decided to do the blank uh, tribute show, I was like, well, I wonder if there's other Blink tribute bands. We went down the rabbit hole of watching other Blink tribute bands. I there's bet, a lot. I bet How good are. slash bad yeah, was what's that, the percentage? Oh, yeah. by the way? Uh, mm, man, I'd say like 70 bad, 30 mm-hmm. good. There yeah. are a few that are phenomenal. Yeah. 
But there are a lot of stinkers out a there. Lot. And, you know, I'd like to one. put us in the better half. Sure. But you be the judge. Come to the show Saturday, December 20th. I'm excited about speak it. Easy. Same thing. You guys played a show uh, with a uh, Green Day cover band. We did. Yeah, they were great. Because yeah. it was the 25th anniversary. They played of like Gookie three, and three hours or something okay. incredible. They, they played really, way, yeah, way too long. You know, like hats off to them for their stamina but oh my god that, that, was, that was too had, much was like a 40 that's too much set. of any one band unless it's the actual band well, and here's and maybe the thing, even then as any band but definitely a cover band your job mm-hmm. on stage is to look at the crowd and if the crowd is big and starts dwindling as you play longer and longer and by the end of it there's 12 people you should have cut some songs out right of your yeah set. yeah uh they didn't do that though so they well, maybe they thought hey we're getting songs. this giant paycheck let's give them their money's worth 40 songs is a big asset. Yeah. I've seen Green Day a lot of times. I don't think they even play 40 They literally songs. played for, it was two, two and a half hours, something like that. It was a long time. That's stopped. a long time. And kudos yeah. to them. They were actually yeah. pretty good, but yeah. that's too long. Too long. We too like long. to keep it at an hour. Yeah. Keep them wanting more. I think that's the smart yeah, move. We're, we're not going to hold you. We might squeeze you. Hey. We're going to please you. Keep going. <laughs> or yourself. Got any more? Got any more? You know what? We might tease you. They're going to tweeze you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> This is basically a rap battle. At yeah, this point. it totally is. I Got ran out. B- I ran out of steam. <laughs> B Rabbit over here. The very first song I ever performed with a band was a Blink Two song. What song was it? It was All the Small Things, mm-hmm. and it was my sophomore year of high school. Uh-huh. And we did were you play it on a Squire Strat? No, it was the Strat I have still. <laughs> I have my first Strat. Did you sing? I sang. Of course. Uh, a guy named Patrick played bass, and a guy named Brian played drums, and it was awful. <laughs> now let me ask you. We were terrible. It, Those it, are perfect. We played it. To, uh, we probably finish that song in a minute 30 it's like i mean it was we played way too fast it was crazy it was terrible but i loved it it was yeah. fun did you, did you plug through a, a boss ds1 distortion pedal uh i had Pro- Bog- bogner no Pro- i think rap. i was straight into the amp danny yeah. and i used to be straight into amp guys mm-hmm. we had marshall half stacks <laughs> Which is ridiculous that we ever owned half stacks i feel like because i just still like, have half stacks well, I have a half stack. well i guess you still do but I mean, there was a long you time when I played, well. yeah, when I when I had had combos and stuff, and that was great. But yeah, you know, but now, that we lugged half stacks around the right. country is bananas to me. I'm more of a blues cube kind it of was... guy myself. Really. <laughs> just put just put it on a folding chair it's and just, mic it. It's just people begging us to turn down all the time. Yeah. was the problem. But they look uh, so fucking cool. They, they do, do look cool. cool. So when is, when does that transition happen? So we're we're all men of a certain age. We're all we're all older gentlemen. True. When when do you go from like? Fucking half stacks. Like, I just want like a 112 Fender Deluxe. Yeah. You know, just, something I can really get to that. Sweet let's, spot. Still let's, let's talk about the iteration of um, of gear that yes. we've had. Oh. Everyone else over oh, a period yeah, yeah. of time oh, has, <laughs> has progressed. So I played with them for oh, over a decade, well Long over time. a decade. I've owned the same bass I've had since I was 17, but I've never purchased any other bass gear. It's an so awesome over, bass, though. Except recently. So, oh, oh, okay. So, Sorry, except recently. I've got a bass. I finally got one, but... This is uh, like a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> and I bought, I bought an amp, too. But over this period of time, we have plugged in, like, like 70s, like, uh, PVPA heads into, like... These like a homemade, <laughs> yeah. I imagine so, like a wedge or something. No, so quite literally, for a decade, he played through a, a friend of mine. In, friend of mine in high school, uh, another band I was in. He built a like his own cab and put like a fifteen inch subwoofer in. It was it like something. MDF mm. or plywood or yeah, it's like something. plywood. I mean, so it's like it's rattle and just sounded. No, it actually, Dude, it actually like for for its intended purpose, it sounded and, great in and, the application of of. Tweezers. And it just, is said, it wires going directly to the no, head? No, Matt said it was literally, it's a PVPA yeah. plugged into this thing. And it actually worked for tweezer because Strangely. it was this like fuzzy, rumbly, yeah. fuzzy yeah, kind, kind of, of grindy. Well, it was really embarrassing there, to be up there with that setup though. Right. And just everyone else has got like their like boutique, yeah. you know, like bad Danny's cat. Danny's like a bad cat. Oh yeah, it finally for sure. Died. It finally died. The, uh, the PV head <laughs> died. And then the cab, my five year old put a punch, like punched the speaker accidentally during the move. Darn. And so one of the movers took it. So it is it's gone. It was the worst the worst setup you could possibly imagine. So But well, here's the thing. It's it sounded good for the application. Yeah. So it's one of those things where I feel like there's some gear snobs that it's all about like the name and what it is, but for the purpose I'll, I'll tell you this. You well. I'm a uh, I'm a gear flipper. 
a buyer and seller of gear. And I will tell you this, those PVPA heads, uh, hardcore bands look for them and like doom dudes look for those PA heads yeah. for bass. They really want them because of that muddy tone. Like they, yeah, I gotta have Well, and they're tone. just, they're, I'm going to say that you started powerful. that trend. They, they got it from us. They yeah, totally yeah, they did. They from you, man. <laughs> Clearly. They see one tweezer, uh, one tweezer cover band. Yeah. And, um, they gotta have what we well, have. Well, that dude looks cool as shit playing it. I gotta get one of those. I remember when I was in, I was in a band called Skyline Picture Show long ago with some with some friends, of course. They were friends. And I didn't just have the half stack. I had a Marshall full stack. That's ballsy. I had a JCM. Did you have it stacked on top of each Wait, other? Wait, full stack? I had a full stack. No, I didn't. Okay. I had a Jenkins music style. Just, it just <laughs> all the way up. All the way up. to reach up there to- <laughs> Get a step ladder. <laughs> to change your tone. No, I had a JCM- I think it was a 900. It might have been 800. I think it was a 900 head. And then I had two angled cabs, so I put them side by side and kind of put the head in the middle, kind of wedge them just a little bit. Okay. And man, it was dope. It was so dope. But the, yeah, I was like, I, I couldn't do that now. Like, I'm almost 40. I'm not... Like, when I got... I, so I bought a bass amp for this Blink project. You have to go to the chiropractor to carry that around. Now. 100%. Yeah. And you know, when, when shopping for my very first nice bass amp, because I've always played guitar and dabbled in bass... And I was like, I, I got to get something decent, you know. Um, so I, I looked at all these PVs. I had to decide on one. I went with the Mark. No, I didn't. I got an Ampeg 1,000 watt head. Dope. Yeah. And then I, I wanted the 810. I wanted, you know, if I'm, if I'm playing Mark Hoppus, I want the classic 810 refrigerator. No way. No way. So I opted for the 610, which I'll tell you what, that is a badass sounding cab. I've always Absolutely thought four tens sound better than eight tens. It's still yeah. cabs, but it still can, like players. looks foreboding on stage. Like it yeah. does. No, it looks amazing. But I, I say just go the kiss route and just have the empty right. cab thing. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. You, I saw Kiss one time, and it's you. They literally, it's like one guy comes out and is picking up these bass cabs, these eight ten bass cabs. And you're like, well, those obviously don't have speakers, <laughs> oh, yeah, in them, yeah. and are, they're made of styrofoam, probably. Are you saying Kiss does it all for show? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. <laughs> Not a big Kiss <laughs> fan, I guess. That was perfect. <laughs> a lot yeah, of Kiss tribute bands is. out there too. Yeah, I went down that rabbit hole not Ooh. long ago. I like a good cover band. I like a good tribute band. When I saw Kiss, Ace Frehley was out for some reason, and they had a guy from a Kiss tribute band as the part of Ace Frehley. When I really saw Kiss, really, isn't that weird? So they journeyed it, kind of. Isn't he still in the band? That guy, what, what, he is. Yeah, this yeah. was like it was like he had broken his leg or something. It was oh, not okay. like a. I probably. I'm gonna fact check that and get it totally wrong, but it was something like that. It was, he was just snopes out for your ass, bro. Tour. He was just out for that tour. For some Breaking reason. your leg is not an excuse. Dave Grohl Dave played Grohl. all of his shows. Yeah. He Dave did. Grohl came back that night. <laughs> he went to the hospital and came back and played the rest what, of the show. Yeah, wasn't Which he sitting the, in like that Game of yes. Thrones? But guitars they built that throne. for the rest of the tour. That's but on dope. that one, he came back and sat on a stool with his leg propped up, and you know, listen, I'm, I'm like, not, that's the coolest rock and roll thing ever. Yeah, I'm not the. I'm not the biggest Foo Fighters fan. I respect them. I think Dave Grohl's cool, but who, who can argue that Dave Grohl isn't cool? That's, oh yeah, nobody can argue that, no. right? Like he's cool. Yeah, he's, he's a he's, he's a sure. lifer, man. Yeah, he played drums on the Tenacious D records. Like that's fucking cool to me. He was also in this little band called Nirvana. Yes, a little bit. Wait, never heard, heard of him. him. David never Grohl. heard of him. Oh, David Grohl. Excuse me, <laughs> David Grohl. <laughs> yeah. He's in the chair. He played drums and scream. I mean, come on. He's been, he's done some I don't. Stuff. Did you just punk me? I punked you, man. You punked me, man. I gave you a little, little punk toss. Bro, Damien Gruel is the coolest rock star ever. Damien so. Gruel. <laughs> That's yes, right, Chris. He, he exactly. Plays right. He plays he play music. music. A That's lot 100% of hundred percent right. You know what, Chris? You we just we we get along so well. It's just kind. Of, you know, we've just been friends for so long. I I don't know. It's just uh. It's second nature, isn't it? I mean, he isn't has the though? best quips. I'm he does. Telling you, man. He is so glad you're here. He's Pithy, you know but, he's you know <laughs> he's soft spoken only a few words, but they all have. A he just changes the energy in the room he when does. he's here. They have he meaning. Does. They have depth. You know everything he says. Yes. There we go. <laughs> poignant. Absolutely. Poignant is the word I'm looking <laughs> for. So uh, let's go back to minutes too far. I want to ask about that because I wasn't super I, okay. I wasn't super familiar with Minutes Too Far. I thought you guys sucked. No, no, no. no I'm just kidding. I, I remember seeing <laughs> the name around. Yeah. Um, but I didn't I didn't I never got to see Minutes Too Far. Well, you didn't soup the hair, your belt wasn't white, and you your pants weren't tight enough. They for weren't too far. Was... And that's not a knock. I love the shit out of Minutes Too Far. You did. I think I mean, you know How you're... old are you too? Me? Yeah. Thirty eight. Okay, so yeah, I mean Oh, he's you, old enough. You probably skewed a little older. Yeah. 
is the problem. Maybe so. Because most of the people that were coming to our shows were younger uh, than us. Like yeah. teenagers, I'm 37. And you would have been in your 20s at that point. I'll so. say this, though. Okay, that makes that's sense. You guys also had sense. a lot of female fans, and that's because you're all very handsome guys. Mm-hmm. You play very poppy, catchy music. You're so kind to say we're handsome. Oh, dude, are you kidding me? Come on. Come on, guys. It, they, means, a, it means a lot. Those female fans were also a little bit young. Let's be like on the young on the well, on the two yeah. young side. Think, yeah. on like, are you talking I don't think like he's the, claiming like, we did anything with was, the female no, fans? No, 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 no. <laughs> whoa, <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa, Blake. <laughs> well, you didn't name your tour bus uh, fucking Lolita Express, right? <laughs> that is true. <laughs> yeah, no, bus we never had. Yeah. I think Chris needs to weigh in on this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Chris, Chris, did you ever have sex with an underage girl? <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. whoa, whoa. You're gonna. Chris doesn't like that kind of like. He's blushing. Chris, you know, you know gather your thoughts, please. You're, you're you're gonna have to phrase that. So you, but you guys did a lot. Of, you guys did a lot of touring. You tour. You you saw the nation. We did. I think we played. We played in all, but I think we played in forty. Oh, but like the one shitty of the states. You what state 40? did we not play? I have no uh, idea. We didn't play in some of the northeast, like those little. Vermont, the, oh, those little like, slivers. We never played in like Massachusetts. Oh, and um, oh, you'll play Boston. I know, isn't that weird? We never g- went to Boston. Really? Uh, yeah. So it's just like Maine, and it's like five states in New England, and then Alaska and Hawaii, obviously, and Montana. I think is the only one west of the Mississippi we didn't play in. West of the Mississippi. Of the Mississippi. Uh, yeah. So we did a lot of that. It was fun. I mean, uh, you know, so okay, uh, minutes too far. It was a lot of fun. It really was while it lasted. Um, you know, like at at that time, I feel like we were one of the only local bands that like kind of gave a shit, like took it serious. We took it seriously. Yeah. Um, not so seriously that we like, you know, took ourselves too seriously, but we took the what we were doing. It's like it, it's it's what we wanted to do. Yeah. We yeah. Had, not that having road cases and, you know, a van is like any... Uh, kind of indication of that, but we'd book tours and we'd right. toured like half of the year, you know, like it was, uh, it, it was, it was a big deal for us. And we liked, we liked what we did. And I think that that uh, like people recognize that, that, you know, actually came out to shows. So they, they knew that we were having a good time and that translated and, and therefore they had a good time is what I'm saying. Right. There. And when you, and you put on like, you put on a show, like you said, like not like having road cases and, and good gear, like make sure, there make sure there is band. something to be said for that though. Right. I think the reason why I never experienced any sort of success outside of maybe having a good show that some friends came to mm-hmm. was I, I was always a fence sitter. Like I never, fully committed like man fuck a job i'm gonna do this you know or i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna save all my money and get that gibson that i wanted you Mm -hmm. know or that road case or that good amp you know i was always like and have that trailer stolen yeah oh yeah (laughs) yeah, yeah. touche that is the other side of the coin i didn't get my shit stolen either nobody wanted a but crate you know here's the thing that (laughs) stuff we put a lot of work into that live show, like a right. lot of work, and it we practiced was, a lot. Practiced a ton, you know. Maybe that's like, <laughs> what, what do you guys consider a ton? Like, I mean, five nights a week, right? When Dude, we were in the swing of stuff, right? I mean, that's a ton. Yeah, if we weren't yeah. on tour, we practiced four or five nights a week, and it was the goal was not just to play well; it was also, especially for me and Steve, to mm-hmm. run around stage and act like idiots. Oh yeah, but not play bad at the same time so yeah, I mean, yeah. Make, yeah. like make it look effortless while putting a lot of effort into yeah, it exactly and, yeah. the goal there was not to like <clears throat> you know it's not saying a lot that we practiced that much to play like you know four chord pop punk songs no, song but we chord. wanted we wanted it to feel effortless so that you know we could have the freedom to move about stage sure. and just like i like we'd practice with the lights off and shit well you, <laughs> so, you, guys, so you weren't looking at your hand yeah exactly oh. you yeah guys, you guys are also coming up in an era where uh that style of music that like i i guess pop punk influence kind of rock yeah was all about the showmanship like yes. spin, the, the spinning guitar era yeah if oh, you that's, a good, that's a good <laughs> Yes, but there were bands like Fall Out Boy that yeah. did all of that and none of the playing the notes right. Yeah. And we didn't want to just do the visual thing. Right. It was important for us to, we wanted to... Sound good. Yeah, we wanted to sound good. Um, and you, you wanted to be good. a band. 
Yeah, yeah. We wanted to be a band yeah. primarily. You didn't want to be a, 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 no offense to Pete Wentz. I'm sure he's a great guy. You just didn't, you didn't want to wince it. You know? <laughs> wince yeah, it. Yeah, I saw them. I The only time I saw them was I went to a taping of uh, Dave Letterman. And I mean, it was that really puts it in perspective, right? <laughs> what they're playing because there's no, yeah, that's pretty good. That's my Letterman. That's because all I they're got. not. There's not a crowd. It's not like you we, feel the subwoofer. We played with Fall Out I wasn't Boy in the several band times. At that no, time. I, I, yeah. I know. I'm just yeah. telling you. Yeah. That Fucking we, twist the knife there, Danny. We uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just saying <laughs> at, at a bowling alley. At a bowling alley, in it was Omaha, Nebraska. In Omaha, yeah, really? exactly. Like several it's a times. Very cool venue. Actually. Yeah, um, cool. They they were totally. Totally cool. It was a lot of fun. Um, you know, I at that time, I did not notice the bad playing. <laughs> it was just like they, they were having a good time, and so was I. Yeah. Well, they were all like hardcore kids, like playing in like hardcore punk bands and stuff, yeah. and then uh, decided to write some, <clears throat> write a couple of hot ditties, as the kids call them. Is that what they call them? I think all the in kids the on the 30s. Think kids yeah. call anything. Yeah. I think ditties. all these kids on Snapchat, they're using hashtag hot, hot ditties. ditties. <laughs> right. But, but you're I, right. Think, I think they're trying to put a, a T instead of a D. Are you, sh- yeah. Hot titty. Oh, that's... I got to spell it out. Okay, because I'm a pop. You literally had to spell it <laughs> with a hard T, right? Hard, hard T. Right. Hard, hard T. T. Okay. Yeah, but that so, was what tried to set it apart. Was everyone was moving a lot? Yeah, and right, right. Putting on a show, actually be able to play our guitars. We, Sometimes to the detriment of our guitars. As one time, Danny's tuning pegs got taken off by the first bass swing. Oh, dude, one of my like a uh, 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 Les Paul special. The neck completely came. out. Out of the body, like clean now, out of the neck happen? pocket. Uh, pff, huh? Now you said bass swing. Was oh, Steve O doing a little s- toss? Literally. Okay, so we. <laughs> okay, the short version of the long story is we're playing oh. in LA and we know we have people that are coming. Sunny to, like, LA. See, like, you know, whatever, mm-hmm. tour booking people and stuff like that. So it's kind of a bigger deal. We Showcase kind of a vibe. Stuff. Is that what the word Yeah, but at? it's a real show. So okay. it's not, you know. And anyway, the very first note of the very first song, Steve-O does a bass swing and like takes off two tuning pegs on Danny's yeah. guitar. It's the only song that we have that has a hard break guitar solo where nothing else is happening, which was not in tune, obviously. Um, but I feel like if anyone saw it, they were like, that was pretty badass that he threw that thing and broke his guitar and they just kept going. Uh, but Danny yeah, but was first not song. happy. <laughs> No. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. That Talk about blowing note, your wad. First note of the first song. Yeah. But uh, we've calmed down a little since then. We haven't broken any guitars in the last Who was there that had nothing to do with the show? Uh, it was Fred. Fred Savage's Savage. sister band was playing no. with us. And yeah, so, so Fred, Fred Savage, Savage was there, <laughs> like rocking out to his sister's band, which is to date the only celebrity I've ever seen in Los Angeles. Is I Fred will say Savage. this Fred Savage's sister sounds like a pop punk band. Yeah, totally. Yeah, it's some band called Birdie. And, uh, and so there it was. Kind of hilarious because that's still the only celebrity I've ever seen in I, Los Angeles. I feel you on that though because I've been to LA several times in the last four years and mm-hmm. I'm always on the hunt, like especially at the airport. Keeping I'm your like, eyes peeled yeah. for a celeb sighting. Right, head, yeah. head on the swivel, yeah, like yeah. looking mm-hmm. around. I'm like, oh, oh, is that Chris D'Elia? You know, oh, who is that? Never. <laughs> I do play a really fun game though that, that I started last time I was in California. It's Porn Star. Or, it, could, or Instagram model, yeah, one t- of the two, whichever t- one you want. Instagram hoe, and we can yeah. say hoe in that category because they—that's the whole thing. What the kids call them? A, a thought, thought. That yeah, hoe over thought, there. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, I'm like, I'm I like, I didn't even know that's what that stood. Oh, for. really? Well, this is how. Welcome, welcome to boys. Oh, I am. Thank you. And we'll when, learn they're, you when they're a little overweight, it's hashtag tater thought. <laughs> <laughs> tater thought. Oh God, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so You're out of touch. You're the best, man. You are the best. I've seen that. Oh, I feel so old. Hey, so how many how many Blink 405 shows are you guys going to commit to? Like, how long is this going to, to last? Because it's, okay, so I'm, regretfully, I was out of town when you guys played that first show. Yeah. Um, but you'll practice be here that for I this attended one, right? was I mean, hopefully, great. hopefully it'll show up. He's well, just yeah. going to show up for the <laughs> Tweezer. Of course. Right? Well, <laughs> <you guys. laughs> to be honest, and I was going to ask you guys this about Tweezer. So for us, like, it was just going to be a one- and yeah. done kind of a thing because the anniversary the, the anniversary of that record just happened to be that year like it's just perfect let's just do that and uh brian drake who does those dance parties uh knew i was a fan of the band we talk about blink all the time he's like it'd be really cool if someone did a band I'm like well i would have been wanting to do one of those kind of things forever so we just kind of threw it together and did it and it was fucking great and that was going to be it and then it was so much fun and we all clicked together as a band we're like maybe we can do another one of these yeah. guys down the road and we, so we got this one and then Word got out about us, man. 
people know about us. Yeah. So we've been asked to play another thing in February, so we're going to do another thing in February. So so to answer your question, I would say as long as you'll have me. Yeah. You know? Oh. You I, I, it's fun. And you know, like I said earlier, right, to me, writing was always like, the worst part about being in a band. So we have this catalog to pull from. You know, they have nine albums, eight albums, something like that. Yeah, yeah. So we have a big catalog to pull from. Maybe we'll do it long enough to where people will want to be, they'll want to hear things off nine or untitled. Or yeah, neighborhoods. Yeah. I mean, dogs I guess un- dogs. Yeah, I guess untitled. Is, we had some stuff. That's part of the reason that. we've done the, you, I mean, to bring it back to you saying around Christmas, part of the reason is like, okay, it kind of became the annual thing. We do it around th- either a Thanksgiving or Christmas. Show, yeah. Kind of it depending started who out. In town when. Plus well, we're all we deeply religious. <laughs> right. Definitely. Deeply. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the, the tradition, the, guys in Weezer. the yes. tradition started out. It's all for Jesus. Thanksgiving. E. Yeah. Like, it was mostly would, Thanksgiving, but then, and then it evolved to just like everyone's schedules kind of sucking. So it was just like anywhere in that, like last quarter of the year, but you get people there in town, you know, people from out of town. Yeah, in town it's like for a holidays. So yeah, and it becomes a reason to like, oh, that's a fun thing to go do. Yeah, hang out with friends, listen it's, to Weezer it's, songs. It's fun to drink some beers, exactly. sing along to Weezer songs, see your friends you haven't seen in a while, do the throw the arm around the other one. And say, so, oh, I love you, man. We have done a <laughs> Tweezer show that didn't have alcohol. Yeah. And it did not go as well yeah. as ones that have alcohol. When Ain't people drink, they weird. tend to have more fun oh, and. Yeah. Uh, to a limit, sometimes you get so drunk that you kick my minivan outside. Oh, that, that definitely happened. Snap. Well, hold on. There's two parts to that. Minivan. <laughs> I'm an old. I'm a dad. I've got. I got. Oh, you got two kids? kids and one on the way. Yeah, hold yeah, on, dude. Yeah. What sold you? Was it that kick-ass commercial that Dodge Caravan did a few years ago, where it was like the remember that rockin' commercial where it was like it was, yes. like a, it was a guy like reminiscing <laughs> about the old days, but. And he goes to buy a minivan. And it's blacked out, but there's like rock and roll music playing. No, it was just the like. My wife wanted one when we had one kid. She just yeah. loves the practicality of it. But They're here's the deal, man. Practical. I drive a Jeep. I'm not. You can load a lot of gear in a minivan. You can, which is why it was at the Tweezer show in the first place. It was an economical purchase. It was a great. <laughs> yeah. So that was a, a fun thing. I came out with gear to a guy kicking my van and uh he put a pretty good sized dent in oh it. yeah he put a big old dent in it now was kicked somebody the there to see the show yeah just and he was be... mad that he got kicked out of the bar at 2 a.m which oh, is I, when I, you get kicked out of you know that's when you get kicked i thought he was mad just... he didn't play anything off of hurley no no no. it was not he was not mad at <laughs> my us. favorite fucking album he didn't even know it was my van he was just <laughs> okay. mad that he had had to exit the venue and happened to kick the was first the... thing that was there yeah because it was backed up because it door, was backed up to right just the first target that he that was not like a brick wall, right? He, yeah. Give me which a was a lot of fun. Yeah, a yeah. lot of fun. It was, uh, so Where's a was, minivan around yeah. here to fucking kick? <laughs> <laughs> not, not the. Civic. I mean, if you're gonna not kick so a wrong. car, a minivan nope. is a nope. great target. Yeah. It's broad. <laughs> you yeah, know? no, you can't miss when you're totally too drunk. Because to, he tried to take a swing at me too. He missed that because he was drunk enough. But you can hit the broad side of a minivan Wait, when you're that drunk. Didn't Danny sit on him? I did. Danny, the, Danny and Chris Sexually? went into. I did. No, Danny. <laughs> okay. Sat on his I face. got very angry. <laughs> Danny and Chris both got. Chris was more mad than I've ever seen him ever. Now, hold on. Can Chris play on this? I mean, if he was there, the guy needs to. Chris, speak is up. it true that you were the most mad you've ever been when that guy took a swing at me? Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, which, when Chris pissed. gets pretty Story drunk, he gets a little out of control. So that's saying a lot. Yeah, but well, he's like fun. He gets like, verbally out of control, yes. so he'll stand back like from a distance and talk <laughs> mad shit. If Danny's around, as long as I'm in between, well, the he, muscle. Anyone this is, is a podcast, in between. So you can't picture this. No. Chris is like five he, seven. He's, five, a he's a little he's guy. A, he's guy. a short guy. Danny's got some muscles on him, sure. and so Chris has always been more confident in talking trash when Danny is nearby to defend his honor. Not so, that it's so ever come to that. To Chris is the Danny Tavito to Tavito. Danny <laughs> Tavito. <laughs> Danny yes. Tavito. To, to, to Danny's, yeah, yeah. Danny, to, Danny, to Danny, 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 oh, it's like like, like twins. Uh, yeah, like Danny Arnold DeVito to Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh yeah, my yeah. god! But this time, <laughs> Chris was the one that went into defense mode and and defended my honor when this guy tried to take a swing at me with my back turned to him too. Oh, what which a is bitch! A cheap move, right? Yeah. Um. Anyway, it was a Getting fun clocked. night. Not. Was that the craziest thing that's happened at Tweezer, or the time that our bass player got off stage and choked a guy? Uh, <laughs> that was yes. that. And not, that was not. That was not you. Not Matt. I was in Other a. Matt. I was in a band at that point. I was on tour. I was in Chicago, and then there was a replacement. Another Matt, oddly enough, and this is one of my favorite stories. That was my good buddy please, Matt Owsley. Somebody yes. please tell okay, the story. So we 
went up to Lawrence, Kansas. We had some friends that lived up there, and they asked a New us Year's show. A New Year's show. Shout out to Lawrence. Great Extremely town. fucking cold. Like, and it was really fun, though. A New Year's show with Tweezer is actually... We've done it a couple times. What venue fun. did you play where you were in Lawrence? Oh, what is it? It's the Galaxy... Fast, uh, not fast it's probably forward, no longer a venue. <laughs> well, Galaxy <laughs> something, right? Rewind? And they had, like, stars and stuff. It's like... Oh, are you thinking of the bar called the Replay Lounge? Replay. That's it. Is it Replay Lounge? Replay. It's on replay. The Rules, yes. Right across, okay, yeah. yeah, probably Replay They have, like, a... Uh, uh, called Replay for the... Fucking... Pinball? Uh, no, uh... Penguins? Uh, slap an ass. You're slapping ass <laughs> But yes, they have, they have pinball. Of course. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. It's a great okay. venue. Yeah. Great venue. Great venue. So, you played it a few really times. small bar area, large yeah. patio. So we're in Lawrence, Kansas, mm-hmm. a town that we are not from, and we only know a couple people that live there. It's the Norman of Kansas. Yes, it's a great town. Very mm-hmm. cool town. We play there a ton in Minutes Too Far, so we had some friends there and stuff. So anyway, we are playing Only in Dreams, and... Um, a very our, bass heavy song our yes. bass player is dating Chris our drummer's sister at the time sorry this is a lot to follow that's alright so he looks out during Only in Dreams I always do this kind of call out to everyone to slow dance during uh, Only in Dreams you know it's kind of well, you got, jam, you got like right? nine and a half minutes to do so and so I'm like yeah, yeah this is New Year's Eve <laughs> it's your chance to go up and like you know ask the girl to dance and stuff and so he sees his girlfriend dancing with this guy that he doesn't know Ooh. and does not know that a friend of ours from Oklahoma City has driven to Lawrence oh, to see his no. friends and us. It's kind of like a twofer. A very good friend. His and name we, is Josh this Floyd. Is, yeah, Josh Floyd. And we went to high school together. He went to high school with this girl he's dancing right. with. We're just all friends. And he has no idea because he's not met this guy, but he's just kind of fuming. And he gets the vibe, not so much that he's just dancing with his girlfriend. He gets the vibe from her that she doesn't want this to be happening. Oh, no. And so... It's a very Back to the Future, Biff Tannen dancing. It is okay. exactly I'm like that, it. okay? Enchantment Under the Sea It's dance. exactly like that, okay. except that nothing bad is actually happening, but right. in his mind it is. And so during the, like, the bridge part where it's only bass, he drops the bass and jumps off stage and grabs Josh Flute, who is... A buck By his 30, neck. A buck 30. <laughs> he is, he, he's he like is six a tall, lanky guy. A skinniest guy. Now, may I ask? He is, got dropped from health insurance in high school because he was too thin. Is this? Oh my god! Really? Is, okay. is this around the time when uh, Owsley was Buff Owsley? Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so he, I mean, he's still, I mean, he's still buff. So like he's Batman, yeah. he picks there is this pre-Buff guy. Owsley. Yeah, seriously, like lifts him off his guy toes. up like by his neck, like Bane. Yeah, I seemingly mean, with no effort <laughs> whatsoever. Shit. It was like he Jeez. picked up like a, a trophy. <laughs> and my wife, girlfriend at the time, is like, "Keep playing," and we're like, "We can't." I mean, it's like this is literally only him playing. Yeah, at this point. Do you just try to play it There's on guitar. There's nothing to cover. <laughs> da, 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 and, da, da, um, it, it, I guess. And eventually, you know, Josh tries to like choke out the and like Carrie's like, "What we know?" And like, you know, eventually it's this huge misunderstanding, and we eventually all laughed about it. But it was super oh weird gosh. at the time because we. Being on stage, we had no idea what happened. We didn't know why he was choking our yeah. friend Josh, and he had no idea that Dude, we. Knew I this felt guy. that as you're telling me, I'm like, ah, uh, like when you're in that. I'm imagining being at that show, knowing all the like, so but awkward. no, oh, this is gonna be <laughs> <Yeah>. fucking weird. <laughs> what are they gonna do? Don't punch him. Don't oh, punch dude, him. Was, do not punch him. It was nuts. Go punch like, a minivan outside. I was kind of like by by the last song of a tweezer show, like Danny is drunk. So I was just like in the moment, you know, and just heard a bong, that being the bass. You yeah, know. the bass hitting and the Looking ground. up and seeing yeah. one a, of my buddies grab another buddy heard a by the neck. Yeah. Speaking of drunk, though. Um, oh, boy. I don't know why I remember this, but <laughs> but one of the funnest shows that I ever Anthony played um, was one of my best friends. Uh, we played a... Um, like a wedding reception for Chad Ronberg. Do you oh, remember yeah. his? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. kids at the bar, Chad. And yeah, me. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah uh, they, they, they did that. that yeah, was that, was, that was. Oh, that was you? Matt yeah, that was me. Yeah, they were the kids. What? That's they were the kids. You were the the, the, the titular yes. kids at the bar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I worked with Chad at the uh, Pack Sun, and he was a. Uh, oh yeah, he was there for a long, I, long time. I work with Chad now again. But yeah. that's, that's I haven't that's, seen him in a. Uh, that's a different episode. Yeah, that's a different episode. Yeah. Important. So between all of us, between Kids of the Bar and Minutes, mm-hmm. Minutes Too Far, we probably played just just I the like hair the rhyme, just the hair under like a thousand shows. Probably <laughs> we played a lot. Oh, I bet it. Um, yeah. I but I remember me and Danny, we got so wasted on everything possible and was it open bar i don't remember it was not just alcohol it was lots of <laughs> other things and i remember us coming out of that and not even remembering anything that we had done that this is at night. a show yes <laughs> you I, were playing a show 
Yeah, oh well, yeah, we were playing. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a tweezer show. But Dirk, for a wedding the, reception, it was like okay. we, it was okay. like a wedding reception that was we a show. blacked out at the beginning. Danny probably doesn't even remember this. But you were getting no, paid to do so. <laughs> I don't. We remember. were getting paid. To I mean, I, so. okay. I it was vaguely. A, it was like a club in Bricktown. It was like it doesn't exist anymore. It was like lit or light. Light. Or light. 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 Yes. It is now called the I Pink totally Parrot Cantina. Yes. Right. Yeah. But it was there, and it was. I mean, honestly, I did not drink. I don't drink much, but I certainly was not hammered, and uh, I did. I kind of forgot that we play that too. So it's there like, were other <laughs> drugs involved. The only thing I remember about that night is the gear that I use because I'm a fucked up person. What did you happen yeah, to use? Tell us what it was. Huh? What did you happen to use? Give us the, the, the rig rundown. Yeah, yeah. I did. The oh, rig the rundown. Black well, I mean, I couldn't tell you the pedals or anything. Day, by the way. Yeah. It, was, uh, it was the Black Cat, the Bad Cat's version of a DC 30, is the combo that I use in Minutes Too Far for a long time. Such a and then a, uh, a hollow body, uh, well, like a Epiphone's version of a 335. Okay. It was like Wine Red. I've seen a video of you playing that. I forgot that you had that guitar entirely. I know. You've had a lot of guitars, but I forgot about that one. Yeah. I've I remember got, those days, real though, problem. in the band, one of the bands I used to be in, I, I had some stage fright, so I would drink a lot at the time, and I remember being pretty much blackout drunk. You know, I could still, like, remember the songs and stuff. I wasn't, like, I was never a sloppy drunk, but I would get very drunk, so I could but pull yeah. it off. But yeah, I, I don't, think you I don't think you're not, pulling that off better maybe than... So. <laughs> oh, maybe so. Okay, so, well... That's not, true. Not to get really nerdy about it, but uh, I did read some article about like why uh, bass players drunk specifically is really bad. It's like there's some science that goes into their hearing yeah. being oh. not right for those frequencies as the more you drink. It yeah. doesn't affect drummers and guitars as much. Interesting. But for bass players specifically, they yeah. think they're nailing it. Oh, yeah. Not so much. I played, I can't played hear a, the frequencies. I played a couple of shows. So I was in a band called Tensor here. We were, we were a pop punk band. We made the band specifically... Wayne? To mm-hmm. be yeah, with Wayne Wedge and Chris and Chris Van Dyne of uh of Blink Four Five, we created the band specifically to get paid to play super easy pop punk like beer punk. Yeah, that that's when the whole beer punk thing was big. So let's play four chord songs, but we can get drunk too, you know. And as I was the bass player in the band, I had a I have a really nice music man stingray, I had an eight ten. I look cool, right? <laughs> I was not as I knocked this microphone. <laughs> so, yeah, but the thing was, we would drink before the shows. And yeah, you think, ah, oh, fucking nail on this fucking, like, I-, I sound like the dude from fucking Rancid right now. I'm just like, no, right. no, no, no. And you to be like- fair, I've seen a handful of people that can do it. Danny, I've not seen you get bad when playing inebriated. Danny has two modes when drinking. He mm-hmm. is either uh, fully functioning or asleep. That's all I've ever seen. <laughs> yes. Danny is either, once he's asleep, you're like, oh, Danny is wasted. Right. That's it. That's the only is, yeah. that's the only indication. He can still play guitar well, he, really well. Danny is the still... backbone of Tweezer. He's the only one to like hit all of the notes all consistently. Of Ooh, and the rest of, of us are just like winging it. Right. <laughs> and then we'll be like, oh, where are we at? Oh, let's look to Danny. Look at Danny's <laughs> hands. That oh. is how it always goes. And so yeah. to, an- to answer it, a question that you asked a long time ago, our set list is just made up pretty much the night of. We have no idea what yeah. we're doing most. Well, because you the guys time. are professional, like you said before, you take it really seriously. So you just you know the songs, we you do. love the band. Been I mean, that's why a we, long time. Yeah, we're, we didn't pick Blink One Eight Two because it's a random ass band, but right? You know it. I know it. I love it. Yeah, you know. Hey, can, you know you can I ask why Chris isn't here? Weezer. No, not you, Chris Monier. You're obviously here, Chris Fantine. Oh uh, well, we ha- well, he, he was on last. He was on last week. So he can't be on two episodes in a row. I mean, I guess he could. Contractually, no. Yeah, he's not allowed. <laughs> there's a there's a statute. There's a writer. Of, uh, Chris limitations. I, I mean, we're all here without our respective drummers. So. That's true. Yeah, but that is weird. But well, drummers, hey, you know. Here's the thing. <laughs> I mean, who, who wants them around, <laughs> really? But I, I'm also a drummer, so my turn can like fucking drummers. So. Yeah. Yeah. So you you do it. out of one yeah. side of your mouth, the other. <laughs> yeah. But here's the thing: we both have really good drummers, and we we both have really sexy drummers. So. I I'll I'll. We yeah, got good, good looking drummer. That. <laughs> that's fine. Chris is, I think, a good looking guy. I feel Seven like points. he. I feel like he received a lot of the uh, aforementioned uh, minutes too far girl attention. Sure. Mm-hmm. Mm. I will say this: if he's not rocking a tie at this show on Saturday, December twenty eighth, I'll speak give easy. him the hmm. memo about be very that. Upset. Okay, that's a, that's like a, it's a Monier staple. You know, it is. It is. The other thing about getting older is that we used to do that for like every 
Weezer show because we never really had an excuse to dress up, so we always did. We always kind of dressed up. Right. I get hotter and hotter now. If I try to wear a blazer to one of these tweezers, yeah. I'm just gonna sweat through it. See, that, luckily for us, Blink is all about the dicky shorts and yeah. like the Hurley <laughs> yeah, T-shirt. The SoCal it's like big. Girl, yeah. So I, jo- Josh and I were talking because we we dress the part. We play the actual. Would you do like the underwear instruments? with the bass covering? Oh man, we I talk, want to, we Robbie. About that. Yeah, I'm kind of like I have tits, man. Like I don't. Uh, nobody wants <laughs> oh, to see those things. On. No one around. thinks it would be flattering. Remember, yeah. you're playing. Who doesn't want to see a good that's pair true. of tits? That's true. I mean, hey, let's just true. let's that talk about this. Nipple It'd be tassels? fun for an encore, maybe <laughs> just like one song. To come out and play like what's I'll my do age it again? If you do that it. would How be pretty that? cool. Right, just we'll like girls it. gone wild. Yeah, you know, yeah. just <laughs> no. You... It's it's still G W A. Wait, G G W, but it's Grandpa's Gone Wild. Okay, <laughs> I'm not that old. When yeah, when you when I say girls gone wild, this happens every time. I'll hear that term every great once in a while. I still hear that steel drum from the infomercial. Yeah. Like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Since, since, yeah, yeah. <laughs> since we're all talking about that, that guy's got a jet. Did people really, I guess, buy those videos? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, but first. here's the thing. I never sure. did. Off to the commercial. But I, yeah, I rolled. I rolled my wing to the commercial. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you get three boobs. Have you ever seen Wait, one of those girls come? Okay. Yeah. No, I, I've never. I wasn't gonna say it, but yes, everyone did. I everyone did. I never. Have. <laughs> I mean, I'm. Buckley's like, I was an investor early on. <laughs> How do you think I made my millions? <laughs> Who do you think bought the minivan? Did that guy get, go to jail though? He, well, no, I think he's wanted. I only know this because, strangely enough, I'm like family friends with the girl that's married to him. Whoa, and that sounds really that's weird. really bizarre. It's the really girl, super bizarre. You're, like, you're, you're reluctant to offer up this information. You should have said. You should have led with that. I don't know her well, but you know, it's like. Her you know, and my parents grew up with each other, and so like around sure. Christmas, like every year, we hang out. She whips like her that, tits so. out for <laughs> everybody. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be five hundred. So I do know. I, I mean, uh, whatever. I guess it's a, apparently he's like a fugitive <laughs> from the law, but they're like in Mexico or somewhere. And sure. So I, like this, I like where he's this. I like where this is going. <laughs> God damn it, Chelsea! Put your tits away. I have no idea what it's her name Christmas. is. But I'm we just don't guessing. need to see them all the time. <laughs> Well, speaking of, we do have to wrap up soon, but I did want to go around the table real quick since this episode is coming out the day after Christmas. Uh huh. I know most people are probably tired of Christmas, but I want to open it up. Hey, to a I'm question. wearing Christmas lights around my neck right yeah, now. Yeah, it's you very are. festive. I'm being festive. You are. Best zone. or worst Christmas gift that you've ever received. Oh, that's so good. Or both. No, you have to pick one. Just one? Okay. One or the other. We don't have all night. That's very true. All right. Okay. Uh, I want to start with you. Do either one of you have one? Because I'm still thinking. I'll, I'll go first. Okay, How about you that? go. Yeah, give you go a little for time. it. Let's see. Yeah, because you knew the question. That's kind of unfair. I didn't. I just made this up. Okay, okay. It's okay. off the top of my head, yeah. Off the top of my dick. Wow. Yeah. I, when I was 16, so I turned 16 in February of this February. year. February. <laughs> and um, I got a car around summertime. Everybody in my family got together and decided to get me car th- things. Okay. Which sounds cool in yeah. theory, yeah. but keep in mind this was around this 1997. Worth, yeah. yeah. So Hot Topic was just opening up in Crossroads Mall. Oh. A lot of that um, classic Guy Fieri flame motif thing. Oh yeah. So like uh, steering wheel covers, fuzzy dies, seat covers, that, uh, like CD save visors. some pussy There's for the mini- rest of I us. Know, <laughs> the, the, those fucking uh, the, the sun visors that yes. have like yeah. It was a minivan. There was a minivan <laughs> at the office. I last worked at that literally had the those flames it might have been side. mine <laughs> it's, like a, right. it's like a 2000 was it a chevy one. lumina might have been okay. i mean it was like a 2001 and the one that looked did like it have a, a weird limb biscuit decal on the front no, that was washed did. away yeah it's, it's a flex that. so it's i got flex. i got nothing it is i got nothing that christmas even from like my immediate family like car accessories i'm talking like an armor all kit now, as a 38-year-old man, that sounds fucking Oh, yeah, dope. I appreciate now. it now, but yeah, it's so it was not. But I no. wanted that DOD grunge pedal that year. Like, I had to have that that Come on, Dad, you got 69, Oh, I bet that thing was terrible in reality, though. The, the DOD grunge? Yeah. It's not good. It's not I've had a few of them. I'll tell you this. Yeah. Thing, yeah. A DOD grunge going through a crate 112 amp. That yeah. was the year 2000. Exactly. Yeah, that was it. It's not oh, going to be great. So that's my worst. That's my worst that I ever yeah. received. So that's 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 I've given some pretty shitty gifts. Have you ever given the AutoZone last minute gift? The AutoZone gift pack where it's like whatever's the, at the register. Right. Yeah, no. Oh. What's well, usually a bun? AutoZone does a great job of bundling them for you. 
It's like a hey, here's zero a, effort. Yeah, it's like here, here's, like here's an armor all spray items. thing, or like the disposables, and it's all in like a nice little it's a, little a roll of the blue shop rags. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, here's some motor oil. Here's enough to change your oil. Yeah. The tire gauge in the shape of a tire. Yeah, now, yeah those are dope. One. Yeah, those see, are dope. but if I were to get car shit. Like different now today yeah, different. i'd be so stoked yeah. yeah but at 16 what did you want what did you want a dod, DOD grunge, grunge battle okay. yeah that's not yes yeah. for sure or a yeah, big muff sure. maybe a big muff the black russian one at the oh time. you mean the one that you had and you fucked up oh yeah, yeah. and sold to Devi ever Nine. that's a weird story dude that yeah. grunge belt has so much gain though it I really mean, oh, for back then did it mean, have more yeah. than the metal zone Oh, for sure, dude. I I I tested MT2, them all right? out, and that everyone just... had that MT two. Because I, if you look behind you, none on of the us left play there, metal. I, I don't still know have why my. We had it. I didn't play metal. metal. I just wanted the most gain yes. possible, and you dimed everything. The most just because oh, we had sure. no idea how to dial in an overdrive, and we're just like, this one. Well, like, it was too like mid rangey. That great. one just had it already scooped. It was just yeah. like it also was... on the original ones on the controls of the one that I inevitably got. The controls were like butt. Face, yes. <laughs> Scream. Oh, yeah. That was what. That was what. It was. Squelch. Was it like a like a sparkly purple yeah. color, yeah. like a crackly yes. kind of purple? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Looked like. Yeah. So my worst gift was I had like this was when I was really young, like probably like eight, nine, ten. Um, like my fam. Well, I'm gonna sound really shitty right now, but yeah, just do it. but uh, my family like we didn't have like a ton of money, so. Um, I had a bike and it was the like ugliest bike. It had like streamers. It had like banana seat, ba- banana seat, yeah. like mm. every cliche. So, <laughs> uh, for Christmas, what my family did was they just like took the same bike and they just cut off the streamers and like repainted the whole thing. And they were like, "Here's your new bike," and I was like, "That's not that's not a new bike. That's the same old oh, shit I had." You saw right through it. Oh, I saw I right they through. Could it. Pull that over. It's like and a ten they, year old. They spent. You they know like my spray painted blue. He's <laughs> not even gonna know. Yeah, so I good, think they though. like painted it like brown. Yeah. Who oh the fuck God. wants a brown uh, bike? Yeah, I've I, never even seen a brown bike. No. The laziest of all colors. <laughs> oh. Seriously. <laughs> so I just was dirty. like, I was just kind of like, mm, I think this is the same bike. They're like, no, 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 definitely not the same bike. Oh. Like, pretty sure it is. Hold on, hold on. So they tried to sell it after the fact. Like you found them out. Or yes. you, you saw through it, I should say. Yes. And they still were like, no. This oh, is- no, 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 no. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, they. Wow. Dude, the okay. Yeah. So I've talked that about. Is shitty. I'll trade you some car shit <laughs> that for is it. so bad. I've talked about before my. But I, I just want. I just want. They tried. They, they did. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I but, get it. But your bike thing reminds me of another bad Christmas gift. So before my mine before was like my sister got me this same thing. She got everybody. Blah, blah, blah. So I asked Santa, quote, Santa. For a, a bike, I wanted a BMX. I wanted like a ni- a cool fucking bike with like the grind rails on it. Like oh, a, I yeah. could do tricks and shit on yeah, it. Yeah, sure. Well, Santa read that as a bike. Just any bike. Any bike. Yeah. So I get a brown 10 speed. Can't do tricks on that. <laughs> no. What fucking 10 year old wants a 10 speed? What a fucking mongoose. I can't get right. on it. You live in Oklahoma. I want a it's, dino. Yeah, I want a, a dino. T, no, a it's a, but it's a 10 speed. It's got 10 speeds. Like, it's everything's flat. And all ready. these hills. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> in retrospect, I'm, I'm thinking from my parents' perspective, like, well, it's got 10 speeds. It must be 10 no, that times was as more good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, they got sold that by someone else. Yeah. That's probably yeah. the dude at the store. Yeah. The it dude was... at the store was like, well, he's going to want 10 gears. It was Al. Yeah. Al yeah. sold them that. I got a oh, shitty know. brown 10 speed with a little basket on the back. Uh, 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 what's your girl's name? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> so good. I, I don't little did I, they know. I don't think I have a worst one. The, the weird best one that... So I like I like to a get surprised. I don't. Everyone just wants lists now, like including my mom. She just wants like I want a list. So I give her like an exhaustive Amazon wish list that has crazy expensive stuff and super cheap stuff because that way it's like surprise me. I don't care. Yeah. Um, but you still but, picked it. How is that? No, no, no. I know. So th- it's not something from that list. So it's hard. Like I feel like no, most people don't put a lot of effort in. Like oh, this is a cool thing that they'll like, and I kind of like getting a gift. That I would never buy myself right. because yeah, I'm cheap yeah. and practical. And my aunt, actually my wife's aunt, got me one of those like a small Yeti cooler. It's oh like, yeah, it's just big yeah, enough yeah. to put like I don't know, fifteen cans in. The I twenty. Use it all I would never buy it. Right. They're still like two hundred dollars. Yeah. yeah. That's not but a practical I, purchase. That's a that's right. A pretty penny from an aunt. Yeah. I know. Well, Especially I your she, wife's aunt. I think her husband got a deal 
Oh, from, okay. Uh, hey. He's a dealer hey. for some other company. Anyway, the point is, it I don't was care how much really cool. I really liked it, and yeah. I didn't have to put it on a list, and I use it all the time. Okay. That that's is super practical. That's a good super one. Super practical. That's good one. So that's me in my 30s. Right. Danny, you know. do you got one? Oh, dude, no. I, so I, my parents didn't suck at getting gifts. Uh, you know, uh, we, we weren't we weren't exactly rich or anything, but the best gift definitely hands down would be a uh, Gibson Les Paul Studio Ooh, okay. that was well, kind of on, a combined. Dude. It was kind of a combined birthday slash Christmas. I was going to say it's got to be they, when they combine because they're close. They're mm-hmm. they're they're not so close that Love that hard, always so. happens, but When's it was close enough. November twelfth. Okay. Close so enough. it was close enough to where I was totally, and I knew that it was happening. Right. Yeah. You know, like she made it clear. So it wasn't just like, where's my birthday gift? <laughs> yeah. You know, so that But in was the back badass. of your mind, were you, were you hoping for like. Still but, have it. But maybe maybe they got me something from yes, my birthday. Yes, I do. I mean, it's, I love that guitar. Compl- like, I've, have you, I've completely stripped it No, down, I've seen but, it. It's okay. amazing. And I was super jealous as a like freshman in high school. Danny's a couple years older than me. So wait, how old were you when you got it? Oh shit, man! I don't know. Fifteen or sixteen or something. Okay, so you so you've had this thing for like twenty okay. years. You had it in for a long time. You Jesus. had it in nineteen ninety eight for sure. Twenty years. So twenty one years. Yeah. So you might have had it longer than that, but I mean that's when I saw you with it, and I remember like, you know, Gibson Les Paul. That was like the yeah. Dream. Oh, dude. Yeah. No. And that, he's the only person I know that had not an Epiphone one. Right. So they, yeah, that's a legit present. Oh, even the kid sure. that had an Epiphone were like, you got a fucking No, that was cool. Totally yeah. But a Gibson Les Paul, I was, that like, was like, that holy is holy grail. Yeah, awesome. You know. I have no idea like how many meals my mother skipped to get me that Seriously. Shit, by that's the way. baller. For like sure. for real. Like, like we lived in an mom. apartment together. Like, like I mom, slept mom, are you on sick? the couch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mom, mom are you, are you, did you go to the doctor? But it was great. It was great. It's a testament. Yeah, that's amazing. That's a dude, that's a that's a Christmas gift of like a decade, dude. That if if it was my mom, she'd be like, this is your Christmas for the next like Forever. 10 years. Yeah. yeah. I was just curious if maybe Chris wanted to chime in. Do you have a worst or best Christmas gift? Maybe worse? Oh, yeah, I, th- I think he does. Hold on. Yeah. Weezer. Oh, yes. <laughs> Hurley, of course. Well, hey, Weezer is the... Hey, speaking of Gratitude. Weezer and Hurley, gift that keeps on giving, Weezer, tribute band Tweezer, playing with Blink-182, who rocks Hurley quite a bit. Blink-405. Blink-405. But I'm saying, it's a, I'm saying bands. Oh. The actual bands that we're covering. Oh. Okay. Blink four or five. Proceed. December twenty eighth. Fifty first street speakeasy. One 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 four. Northwest. Fifty first street. You know, the address. you know where Wow, you well, I worked there. There, oh, yeah. oh, that's that how we got a, our in. That makes yeah. a lot more yeah. sense. I was yeah. like, man, I don't know the address <laughs> of even my house right now, I don't think. Who 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 would? Come out, come check us out. It's yes. gonna be a really fun time. Please. Uh we're gonna keep the holidays alive. It's gonna be a few days after Christmas, but fuck it, man. You keep the tree up till New Year's. Yeah. Let's keep the this thing is ring. Like, <laughs> I know, dude. I, I feel so bad. Uh, keep the holiday spirit alive with us. We'll keep it alive in you, on you, below you. <laughs> I can't promise anything. Around, that. Well, around you. we'll try. Hey, well, I'm gonna make a commitment to, to be keep on it you, in you. Oh, oh please, okay. do. there we go. <laughs> Buckley will be in you. That's why I'm keeping my clothes on, Dan. I'll <laughs> keep the holiday spirit inside you. <laughs> yeah. He's serious. He's not gonna let it out of you. Are you I, I no. might need those uh, lights. Oh, for we, the yeah. Show. We'll we'll, we'll okay. bring it. We'll yeah. bring it for sure. You can have them, man. I take. I'll let my holiday Dollar spirit tree. inside okay, you. Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna they go. One dollar <laughs> inside scoop. Yep. I'm gonna get some of those. All right, guys. Well, we gotta wrap up. Thank you guys for coming. All four of you really appreciate it. And uh, come to the show. We'll if be you're there. listening. Yeah, okay, yeah, I'll, we're going to be, be singing along I'll to your there. songs. Hopefully, you're singing along to ours. We definitely it's, will. It's going to be a blast. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for stopping by. Yeah. And we will see you next week. Bye.